Matt Pearson, uh, the Chief Exploration Officer and co-founder with Fleet Space Technologies. Thanks for joining us on Australia in Space TV. Thank you for having me. Now, we're in uh, your pod here uh, at the uh, Australian Space Forum. Yep. Uh, maybe introduce us to what technology you've got on display. Absolutely. So we wanted to give a showcase to the forum of uh, you know, what space is for and some of the applications that, uh, that we're involved in. Uh, so Fleet mainly focuses on finding critical minerals in mining, lithium, copper, nickel, um, etc. Um, but you know, here we're, we're across from defense. We've just won our first defense contract with Australian Space Command. Right. And, uh, and so we're also showcasing that we can do voice comms, blue force tracking, um, tactical voice and data, um, and other sorts of um, you know, asymmetric capabilities for, for defense. So your development must be quite rapid. Last time we uh, spoke to you, you were 3D printing your satellites and you had some new mining deals, as you say, exploration. But now you have your own satellite tracking platform and expanding the services that you can provide around that? Yes, so seven satellites in orbit so far, another four um, ready to launch at yep. the moment. Um, and yeah, our customer base is growing through the roof at the moment. We're, we're past 100 people, which is a great milestone right. for us as well. Uh, so yeah, things are going um, gangbusters at the moment. It's, it's a really exciting time. What's the launch schedule? Uh, should be this year, later this year? Yeah, a couple this year and a couple next year and then continuing the, the schedule. We want to be regularly launching, um, keeping that cadence high and expanding it. Um, we don't need to launch tens of thousands of satellites like SpaceX. We're, we're really targeted with our applications, so we're focused on really high value applications in mineral exploration, um, etc with the, the minimum number of satellites that, that we can we can launch. Um, but our planned constellation is over 100 satellites. So um, yeah, we're, we've got a, a lot of growth ahead of us. Would you like to be launching from Australia one day? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, who wouldn't? Yeah. Uh, I think there are a lot of people who would love to be launching from Australia, and I think we will soon. Um, so there are great companies um, like Gilmore Space and Southern Launch that are um, developing different parts of the value chain for launch. Um, it would be a lot more convenient to be able to launch from here um, for a whole range of reasons. Um, and I think it's a, it's a capability Australia absolutely must have yeah. um, to, to be a, a, a proper part of the international space community. How much are your satellites changing in terms of that technology? That innovation continues or particularly you 3D print your, your own satellites? Definitely. Uh, yeah, how much is changing there or do you find that you've stabilised a little bit more on your technology? We've got a baseline that works really well. Um, that's always nice. <laughs> you know, establish a, a working uh, payload and, uh, and, and something that you can just produce again and again and again. But that's actually encouraged us to increase our innovation um, cycle and try some, some really out there things. So we're now, we're just getting to grips with, I um, mean, we're kind of at the beginning of our 3D printing journey really and realizing there are so many things that we can do uh, to get more um, throughput out of a given um, mass of metal. Um, so yeah, you're going to see some really radical things. And I think that's one of our, it's one of our core values in engineering at the moment is um, really focus on radical ideas. Um, 3D printing is great for complex shapes. Um, so we want to get a lot more complex and a lot more throughput yeah. um, from that metal in the sky. The other one I've seen with Fleet is your diversification within the market and trying to find new customer base uh, yes. as well. What are those key ones for you? We've mentioned mining exploration. Yeah, you uh, notice defense. I'm quite focused, yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, but yeah, maybe moving outside of that, what's, what's the roadmap looking like? Yeah, I mean, there's so much, we've barely scratched the surface in uh, mineral exploration. The big challenge in the world is, uh, you know, we need to increase critical mineral production by 7,000% in order to reach net zero targets. Yeah. That's really hard. That's never been done in human history before. So, you know, nowhere in human history, and we've been, you know, mining copper for the whole of record, before recorded human history. So we've never had a, a minerals increase like this. So there's a hell of a lot of work to do in geophysics and, uh, and the work we're doing to accelerate um, exploration uh, on Earth. Um, we obviously, yes, uh, defense um, at the moment, you know, it's really important for every country to have a sovereign satellite capability, you know, underpins so much of the services that we have on the ground. Uh, so we're working on that. Um, and then my personal favorite is space exploration. So um, we're really, we're looking ahead to the moon and Mars and, and thinking about what are the capabilities that we're developing on Earth that are going to be relevant for um, exploration. Do you see real opportunities there for you, say the Artemis missions on the moon? I know uh, Flavia 
uh, mentioned that last time we spoke. Yep. Um, yeah, do you see opportunities there for you uh, Big time. In, in the short term? And is it something you can respond to as there calls for sort of RPAs? I think the big challenge is um, in all exploration, whether you're looking for minerals on Earth or looking for water ice on the moon, um, is ultimately you need that, that ground truth. So you're going to have to drill a hole at some yeah. point, right? And uh, that like ge geology trumps geophysics. Um, the challenge is drilling is full of risk. Um, you know, a drilling rig on Earth breaks down every day, maybe twice a day. So. Yeah. If you do that at, with an autonomous drilling rig, this is why all the drilling missions so far in, in space have struggled. Um, and, uh, and so what you want to do is de-risk that drill program, which is exactly what we do on Earth, um, with like high quality geophysics really fast, so you know where to put that next hole. Um, if you're going to go to the, all the expense and time of delivering something to the moon, um, billions of dollars in these programs, yeah. You, you want to know that every drill hole that you, you put down um, is going to count and, and hopefully you can map that to geophysical data that you've collected um, and, and maximize the value of those holes. So you know, use all the data that you're generating, ground truth it with, with a couple of holes, but uh, don't rely purely on drilling. So geophysics is absolutely essential in that and that's something Australia does extremely well. So when we think about what should Australia be doing and bringing to space exploration in the future? It should be our strengths. We have massive, massive strength in uh, geophysics for mineral exploration. That's what we need. Well, you're in the hot seat. It's great to have Fleet back on the Australian Space TV uh, in your uh, hub here at the Australian Space Forum. Matt Pearson, Chief Exploration Officer or CXO yep. uh, and co-founder with Fleet Space. Congratulations on getting this far even in this, in this industry. Thank you. Uh, and you're definitely one to watch. Thank you very much. Thanks, Matt.